good evening friends amongst us we have justice v ram kumar and as usual we will be taking the session in an interactive form and i will read the question and justice v ram kumar will explain the same issues in a more explicit manner as usual people love to understand from him and that's why on our request which we did receive on whatsapp as well as on the emails etc we keep on requesting and he also is always willing to see to that so the question is at about 11 am on a sunday while a lady aged 27 years was alone in her house a person aged about 38 years and who claimed to be a friend of her husband came asking for her husband she told the person that her husband had gone to the market to purchase some vegetables and fish and would return in half an hour she asked the visitor to be seated and said that she would make some tea in the meanwhile while she was busy making the tea the visitor stealthily came to the kitchen and clasped her from behind intending to outrage her modesty with a loud protest she shook herself free and pushed the intruder who immediately left the house she narrated her bitter experience to her husband who told her that although he knew the visitor the latter was not his friend he asked her to call the police and make a complaint she called the officer in charge of the police station sho for short and narrated the entire incident amounting to an offence punishable under section 354 ipc the sho asked her whether she had any physical or mental disability and she as well as her husband replied in the negative even though the sho was convinced about the commission of the offence and he made a routine entry in the general diary daily diary book about the telephonic information he asked her to go to the police station and give a complaint as the victim was disinclined to do so she sent a letter by post to the district superintendent of police dsp for short narrating the whole incident and stating that the conduct of the sho amounted to refusal to record her information and requested the dsp to investigate the case on receipt of the letter the dsp asked for an explanation from this sho on the following lines why did not the sho treat the telephonic information as one received under section 154 crpc why did not the sho treat the telephonic information as one received under the section 154 crpc why did instead of asking the victim to go to the police station and make a complaint the sho himself did not go to the police go to the house of the victim and do the needful in view of the proviso to section 160 sub clause 1 crpc on the advice taken from the assistant public prosecutor app for short the sho gave the following reply any information given on telephone to the police is not for the purpose of lodging an fir but to request the police to reach the place of occurrence by paras 113 and 14 of siddharth vishisht at the rate manu sharma was a state in city of delhi 2010 volume 6 scc 1 where a telephonic information is received from an unknown person since the procedural formalities such as reducing the information into writing and reading it over to the informant and obtaining his or her signatures on the transcribed information etc cannot be completed the same cannot be treated as an fir right paras 33 to 37 suraji sarkar was state of west bengal 2013 volume 2 scc 146 it is only if the victim lady was mentally or physically disabled so temporarily or permanently should the sho go to her residence and record the information as mandated by clause a of the second proviso to section 1541 crpc here he had ascertained from the victim that she had no dis such disability and she should have gone to the police station and lodged the first information report statement fir for short the proviso to section 161 sub clause 1 crpc exempting certain categories of victims from being required to attend the police station is applicable only during the course of investigation here since the fir has been not been registered there could not be any investigation the supreme court has ruled that registration of an fir is a condition precedent for commencement of an investigation by the para 1 of mahindra versus state of punjab 2001 air sc 2113 and para 25 of shashikant versus cpi air 2000 sc 351 so my questions to you is as follows the registration of an fir is a condition precedent for the commencement of an investigation true in all cases now the sho when the dsp sought for an explanation from the sho sho after taking legal opinion from the app 
cited two decisions of the Supreme Court, wherein the Supreme Court has held that registration of an FIR is a condition precedent for the commencement of investigation. In a way, in fact, the Supreme Court has held in those two decisions, that is, AR 2001 Supreme Court 2113 and AR 2007 Supreme Court 351, that the registration of an FIR is the sine qua non for the commencement of investigation. I would respectfully say that it is only the ordinary rule. Registration, unless the FIR is registered, there cannot be an investigation, is the ordinary rule. But there can be extraordinary situations where investigation can precede the registration of an FIR. In fact, there's a beautiful decision by uh, Porter, Lord Porter, in the famous uh, Emperor versus Khwaja Nazir Ahmad, AR 1945, Privy Council, page 18, where Lord Porter has uh, observed as follows. But in any case, the receipt and recording of an information report is not a condition precedent to the setting in motion of a criminal investigation. No doubt, in the great majority of cases, criminal prosecutions are undertaken as a result of information received and recorded in this way. But their lordships see no reason why the police, if in possession through their own knowledge or by means of credible though informal intelligence, which genuinely leads them to the belief that cognizable offense has been committed, should not of their own motion undertake an investigation into the truth of the matter alleged. Section 157 CRP of the Code of Criminal Procedure, when directing that a police officer who has reason to suspect from information or otherwise that an offense which is, which is about to investigate under Section 156 has been committed, shall proceed to investigate the facts and circumstances, supports this view. In fact, as you all know, the, when a information regarding the commission of a cognizable offense is received by the officer in charge of a police station, that is the SHO, he is bound to register a crime. But if you read Section 157, the police officer, the SHO, is bound to investigate in a case where he got information, that is, information under Section 154, or otherwise, that otherwise takes in all those cases where, even without any information, he is bound to uh, start, commence investigation. For example, a police officer is going on patrol duty in his police jeep with, the, with a um, team of uh, police officers. On the way, he comes across a person committing a cognizable offense. Nobody informs him. Nobody gives information under Section 154. So this is a situation where on information or otherwise, this otherwise clause under Section 157 is attracted in such case. Likewise, when a telephonic information is obtained regarding the commission of a cognizable offense, it is actually, it is an information under Section 154 itself. He is bound to register an FIR and commence investigation. As a matter of fact, once that information is received and it is recorded in the uh, uh, journal diary, it is uh, there in a uh, FIR registered and investigation has started. In fact, the, the two decisions is only ordinary rule that come. The registration of a crime is sine qua non for the commencement of investigation. Not always. There can be situations where the investigation can precede the registration of FIR. You may refer to um, State of UP versus Bhagavad Kishore Joshi, AR 1964 Supreme Court 221. Three judges. K. Subarao is the uh, gives the leading judgment, and uh, there is a supporting judgment by Justice uh, R. Madolkar. Now, uh, again, in paragraph 11 of Aprem Joseph alias Current Kunju Kunju versus State of Kerala. AIR 1973, Supreme Court, page 1, corresponding to 1973, volume 3, SEC 114. Again, three judges. Justice J.M. Shailath, Acting Chief Justice, I.D. Dua and H.R. Khanna J. I.D. Dua being the author of the judgment. Then Chandra Babu versus State of Sub-Inspector Police, 1988 to KLT 529. 
that is by Justice Katie Thomas, as his lordship was of the Kerala High Court. It's a beautiful decision, where an officer, a police officer, gets information through telephone. He swings into action, goes and uh, ca catches hold of the culprit, committing a cognizable offence, and uh, he conducts some investigation also. Then, with the booty and the accused, he goes to the police station and registers the crime. When the case came up for trial, it was argued that whatever he did prior to the registration of the crime was not investigation. Justice Thomas said no. In fact, following that uh, Bhagavan Kishore Joshi, year 1954 Supreme Court 221, no, there can be situations where investigation can precede the formal registration of a crime. Again, in uh, Siddharth Vashisht versus Manu Sharma, state of, uh, versus, uh, sorry, Siddharth Vashisht alias Manu Sharma versus state of uh, Delhi, NCT of Delhi, A.R. 2010 Supreme Court 2352. Paragraph 36 may kindly be seen. Para 36, where their lordships refer, refer to Bhagavan Kishore Joshi, etc., to hold that there can be situations where there can, investigation can precede the formal registration of a crime. Now, coming to the facts of the present case, the moment the victim informed the SHO through telephone regarding the commission of a cognizable offense and which information was duly entered by him in the general diary, it amounted to an FIR. And even without registering the same, the stage was not, the stage of investigation had commenced. And the SHO was not justified in directing the victim to go over to the police station and give a formal complaint. On the contrary, the SHO was obliged to go to the residence of the victim. That we will consider in the during the while discussing the next problem. Next question. That is my take on this question. 